ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಅಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ ಅಟ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ ಮಹಾನಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಮೆನ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಬಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಯಾಫೈಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಬಾಟ್ನಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ Uh, objectives so what will be dealt in this uh, session is uh, to study the general features of bryophytes regarding its distribution morphology and anatomy reproduction which includes vegetative and asexual and sexual reproduction and then the sporophyte sporophytes and lastly the alternation of generation what we see in the bryophytes coming to the general characters the division bryophyta that is bryon means moss so most of the major distributive or major group of plants in the bryophytes is the mosses which includes uh, that's why the name that is bryophyta bryon means moss and it is called as bryophyta this bryophyta in this group which includes about 25000 species of non vascular embryophytes such as mosses liverworts and hornworts it includes all these category of plants of which majorly it includes mosses so the study of this bryophytes is called as bryology which includes the most simplest and most primitive kind of land plants followed by algae the bryophytes are small plants in reach it's about 2 cm to 60 cm that grow in moist shady places So most of the bryophytes prefer moist condition and also shady conditions and hence they flourish very well in this kind of habitats they do not attain great heights because of absence of roots vascular tissues mechanical tissues and cuticle the distribution of bryophytes is mainly confined to the land surface or wall surface or tree trunk surfaces and they do not attain heights because of these reasons that is they do not have roots vascular tissues or any other type of mechanical tissues like parenchyma or parenchyma and a protective or tissue like cuticle the terrestrial we say that they are found in more shady places they are terrestrial but they need water to complete their life cycle hence we call them as amphibians of plant kingdom most of them that's why they grow at shade damp places where there is sufficient water content and there is no direct rays of sunlight the bryophyte plant body you see it's a gametophyte so that's why in bryophyte gametophyte is the dominant phase in the life cycle and longer lived plants is the haploid gametophyte so the gametophyte is the haploid generation and that's the prominent uh, stage in the life cycle of the bryophytes the diploid sporophytes are found in the gamet uh, bryophytes but they appear only occasionally and remain attached to the nucle uh, to the uh, thallus or the gametophyte plant body so diploid sporophytes are attached to the gametophyte plant body and they are most of the time dependent on the gametophyte both for attachment and for nutrition the plant body of the bryophytes is a thalloid plant body that is the, it's a thallus that is not differentiated into true roots stem leaves nor any kind of leafy shoots are present you don't find a root stem or leaves it's just a thallus the plants are usually green and they possess abundant chloroplasts and they are for they are autotrophic plants as i told you there is no leaves here the bryophytes lack true stem roots and leaves they have leaf like scales that contain chloroplast or leaf like appendages which are green in color that is which have chloroplast and photosynthesis occurs in those leaf like structures or in the cells of the thallus but true leaves are totally absent in the bryophytes the rhizoids are relatively simple sometimes it is multicellular filaments and thin walled cells and extend from the photosynthetic tissue into the soil 
So rhizoids are very simple. Again, here true roots are absent. You find rhizoids which are uh, simple. It may be multicellular filaments and extend or arise from the thallus and which grows towards the soil. Usually they are small and ground hugging as the sprayophytes grow on the surface of soil, rocks, tree trunks and walls or damp uh, surfaces. The rhizoids will uh, grow towards the soil and hug the soil or will be attached to the soil usually measuring about 2 to 4 inches and hence they also lack true stems. So this was the thallus organization of the graphites coming to its reproduction they reproduce by vegetative and asexual methods even asexual method is a form of vegetative reproduction itself here vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation death and decay of the old thallus or uh, the thallus which gets separated by death and the decay then by budding then by secondary protonema so secondary protonema are structures which are produced from the uh, thallus then advantageous branches which arise additionally on the thallus these are the vegetative reproduction methods then coming to asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction we find some specialized structures which are produced in some of the graphites which is called as gemme so this gemme is uh, disseminated from the thallus and where it falls it germinates and gives rise to a new thallus these are structures which is usually on born on some specialized bodies called as jama cups. These arise as very thin lens shaped uh, structures and uh, within that you find a structure which is called as jama. This gets detached from the parent body and germinate to form new individuals. Coming now to sexual reproduction, it's always oogamous. That is, we find the male and female reproductive structures. So the male gamete is a small and motile structure while female gamete is a large and non-motile structure. Male reproductive organs are called as antheridia which produce the male gametes or anterozoites and female reproductive structure is called as archegonia. Both these reproductive structures are multicellular structures and they are protected by a jacket. Antheridia is differentiated into stalk and body while archegonia is stalked and differentiated into winter and neck. So the main reproductive organ you can see here is a structure which as I told you is a multicellular structure uh, which has a stalk and a body. The stalk uh, may be uh, two, uh, two, a few cells in uh, thickness and two to a uh, few layers in height. And it's differentiated into stalk and body. And the male gamete is produced within this uh, body, uh, which is called as anterozoites and which is motile. Coming to archegonia, this is the structure of an archegonia, matured one, which has a venter portion, a rounded bulbous structure, and an elongated portion, which is called as neck, and which is a uh, uh, stalk structure, which is provided with a stalk which is one to a few cells in thickness and within this venter we find a female gamete which is produced which is also called as an egg which is large and non motile So the antherozoites come and fuse with the female gamete in the venter or in the archegonia and result in the formation of a zygote. So the zy that zygote gives rise to a next stage in the plant body that is called as sporophyte. So it's a multicellular, the embryo develops inside the archegonium after the fertilization process and gives rise to a sporophyte. So sporophyte is differentiated into foot, seta and capsule. The capsule produces haploid neospores of similar types. Usually the spores produced are of uh, one type, what, that's why it's called as homosporous. So this sporophyte is uh, attached to the gametophyte, that's why it's totally dependent on the gametophyte. The spores are produced within the sporophyte by reduction division, that's why it's called as the haploid meiospores. And then the sporophyte ruptures and spores are 
liberated, which germinates into a young or a juvenile gametophyte, which is called as protonema. So the spores are released from the sporophyte and germinate on a suitable substratum into a small gametophyte. It's usually called as protonema. Then this uh, protonema will um, further gives rise to the rhizoids and the thallus producing an uh, adult gametophyte. So the young gametophyte which is produced that the haploid spores which represent the first cell of the spore of gametophyte and the spore which falls on suitable medium generates, germinates and produces a gametophytic plant body. Hence in the bryophyte we find uh, two stages or two phases in the life cycle. The haploid sporophytic generation that is which is called as a gametophyte and the diploid sporophytic generation which is called as a sporophyte. You can see here this is the alternation of generation that is the gametophyte plant body is there which produces the uh, male and female gametes which undergoes uh, which uh, uh, fertilization resulting in the formation of embryo. This embryo gives rise to a a mature sporophyte which is attached to the gametophyte plant body. This within this gametophyte uh, sporophyte it undergoes reduction division, uh, division releasing the meospores which are haploid which will give rise to a small filamentous young or juvenile gametophyte which is called as protonema. This protonema further gives rise to an adult gametophyte. So this cycle includes gametophyte alternating with sporophyte, this kind of alternation of generation is seen in the bryophytes. So this was a general characters. Coming now to the classification of bryophytes. Bryophytes are classified by several modes. So, so we find the classification of bryophytes which is given in different views. Overall when we see the primary classification, the this word bryophyte was coined by a brown in 1864 which included all these kind of plants but later on the since there was a well defined uh, distinction between the uh, algal forms and bryophytes this was put under another separate group and it was uh, further divided into three major uh, groups or classes that is hepaticopsida, anthoceratopsida and bryopsida. So this classification uh, which is even followed now, so we can see as per the ICBN rules, so this uh, bryophyte was uh, differentiated into three major classes that is uh, uh, hepaticopsida, anthocytopsida and bryopsida. Hepaticopsida were called as liverworts or thallus-like, uh, leaf-like or thallus-like structures. And um, Anthocytopsida was, was called as converts because it produced uh, a thallus on, on which the sporophytes arise, which are horn like, called as converts. Then there is a third class that is Bryopsida. These are small, mild, miniature like uh, plants, which was called as mosses. In uh, overall, around 24 to 25,000 species of uh, uh, bryophytes are there and uh, around 960 genera um, divided into three uh, these classes. So this type of classification was followed by most of the bryologists or taxonomists. Well, Taktajin, it's Pariha, then it's Churster and Udar, all of them have followed this type of classification which is being ideal and followed even today. So this first class that is hepatic oxida includes around 330 genera and around 800 species which includes further orders Calobrilis, Jungermanalis, Calobrilis includes moss like hepatics, Jungermanalis includes scaly moss like hepatics, then Metazerealis which includes multi-form thallus, then Marcinchialis which includes chambered hepatic tree members, then Spirocarpalis which includes bottle shaped hepatics, then monophyllalis, which in, includes the members which have giant tunnels. So this is based in, usually on the structure of the gametophyte. Then coming to anthocytopsida, it has only one order. Uh, there are seven genera in that. 
that is anthocyanur talus is the only one order of which anthocyanurs and notocyanurs are the two major forms in anthocyanotoxida coming to bryopsida there are around uh, 700 genera and 14000 species here these members of bryopsida are further classified in, in these orders based on the character of the gametophyte and sporophyte and in the sporophyte especially the different types of uh, capsule and the uh, uh, peristome teeth which is found in the sporophyte it is divided into these orders that is pagnalis arachidalis tetraphyllis andrealis bryalis polytrichalis and tetrachalis so these are the major classification what we uh, find in this so these subclasses of the bryopsida members are further divided into orders which has been mentioned like pagnalis andrealis boxumbeles and this bryidae is the largest one which includes several orders and polytrichalis and uh, dawsonelis is in the uh, fifth order so this was the outlines of the classification of the bryophytes so major uh, three groups is the hepatic opsida so the general uh, of characters or general features of this is hepatic opsida members are liverworts like which resemble the lobes of the liver hence it is called as liverworts so liverworts usually lack any conducting elements that is either of the hilum or florian and uh, even cuticle and stomata the gametophyte can be talus like it may be a flat talus like structure or in some order, order like the jungermanelis it may be leafy like talus the talus usually is has little part sort of differentiation in the form of photosynthetic tissue storage tissues and air chambers in the talus in these mem members belonging to hepatic opsida and coming to sporophyte it's compact without a short or with uh, without a short seta the capsule is usually in this is a single layer dwarf coming to the next major or uh, class that is anthocyanotoxida usually it is called as hornworts because they are called so because they have elongated horn like uh, structure of the sporophyte hence it's called as hornwort gametophyte is usually a talus which is rosette or ribbon like and most of the hornworts have usually cavities in the internal tissue which contains uh, some uh, photosynthetic cyanobacteria especially nostoc then the sporophyte which is horn which usually grows from the archegonium is embedded within the gametophyte tissue and a mature sporophyte is a multicellular outer layer a central columella which runs from the base to the top and the layer of tissue surrounding the um, uh, columella is a sporogenous tissue which gives rise to the uh, pseudoelators and spore mother cells which gives rise to the spores coming to the third class which is bryopsida the mosses which uh, contain about 95% of the uh, most of the bryophytes where here the gametophyte plant body is differentiated to prostrate protonema and an erect radial a uh, leafy shoot which has persistent leaves which is spirally arranged on a stem like axis and rhizoids are present which fix it into the substratum and the sporophyte is well differentiated here in its both seta and capsule and most of the uh, characteristic feature of the bryophyte is the dispersal of uh, spores from the sporophyte with the mechanism of peristome action so these are the different uh, sources of reference taken for the presentation it's the vashishta uh, uh, work and parihar rainpuri and these are the google sites for which has been referred for the uh, pictures photographs and other reading materials thank you